this game serves much more as the measuring stick, if you will, in regards to, okay, how far away or close to is South Carolina to realistically, you know, finishing top half or top third, I should say, uh, of the SEC East and realistically competing? Like, kind of how far off are they or how close are they, if you will? The significance in this football game, when you look at it, how important is it for Shane Beamer and his early tenure at South Carolina? I, I Honestly, I, I think it's probably the most important game uh, in the SEC this year mm-hmm. because <clears throat> I, I still think Florida and Georgia – are, are better than Carolina, especially after watching Florida and Alabama yesterday. I, I mean, I do think that Florida is a much better football team right now than Carolina and Kentucky and Tennessee and the rest of the East, except Georgia. Um, the middle of the pack though, right? Tennessee, Kentucky, in my opinion, um, you know, Kentucky's a better football team than Tennessee so where do you finish there in the middle of that pack, right? Um, and again, it's a team that's lost six out of seven. Um, and they've, they've just done it in so many funky ways too. Um, you know, it's, it's weird. Like I think back to that, sort of that, the, the, that first loss in 2014, I was there. Uh, you know, all of a sudden they start running the whole freaking wildcat. Yeah. Uh, you know, late in that game. And it was just kind of, and whammy had no idea how to stop it. Um, And, you know, it it just almost feels like Kentucky has outsmarted Carolina time and time again, in some of the schemes that they've been able to pull off. And I, and I don't understand why that is. I think South Carolina has more talent than Kentucky defensively. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think offensively, uh, I, I said this in the offseason, Kentucky's a problem. I mean, Levis, he he looks uh, – the, the throws that he's able to make – and we're not just talking like, you know, 10, 15-yard throws. I mean, we're talking like 50-yard bombs. Yeah, I, I was watching yesterday. It looked effortless. I mean, like flick of the wrist for him. I mean, it was – Yeah, I mean, and, and it really is. I mean, and that offensive line has given him plenty of time, too, to, to make those plays. Uh, so, you know, I think – safeties in this game play a pivotal role for Carolina. Uh, and I really do hope for the Gamecocks sake that they get Cam Smith back um, because, you know, he's arguably <clears throat> the best, the best player in that secondary. And if you take him away, then I think Levis is, is going to be able to throw the ball where he wants to. Um, so, yeah, that's, I think that's my key. That's my key for, for Saturday is the play of the secondary. Because uh, I, I do think, honestly, Chris, I, I do think that Carolina's defensive line can stop the run. I think they can stop Rodriguez. I, I don't know if the secondary, from what I've seen, uh, I know that they've played, they've played better. Like the first two games, they played better, I think, than what we thought they would. But again, they got exposed on Saturday night. You you saw the issues. You saw the issues we were worried about in the preseason. You saw the issues, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, from what I've seen, you know, Levis has got the receivers uh, to do it. And, you know, he certainly has the arm. So, uh, yeah, they've got to be ready. Uh, They they definitely have to be ready for the bombs because they're coming. Um, And it's it's really weird to say that because I I, – maybe I just have – short-term memory loss. I don't even know, but, uh, or maybe I drink too much. That's probably it. But, um, but, uh, I, like, I don't remember a Kentucky team sort of designed like this, you know, where you have a quarterback that's going out there and just chucking it all over the field. Um, it's been, a, it's been a while for them. They've been a ground different. and pound, you know, that's what I was yeah. going to say is the, when I think of the, you know, the six of seven that Carolina's lost in the oh. Kentucky series, yeah, they have physically whipped you at the point of yeah. attack. That, that's sure. really, to me, been the, the entire story of that six of yeah. seven. They, they have just, and so that's, you know, since we're giving keys for the game, I know it's only Monday, but my key would be the line of scrimmage and the offensive line. You simply yeah. will not win the football game if you cannot run the football. I, I just, I fully believe that. If that offensive line doesn't make a huge jump, and again, I know it was Georgia, you can't gauge, but they've been bad all year. And again, like you yeah. said, that's the point Ben yeah. was making. They've been bad all season. Yeah. So if they can't figure it out, get it together, run the football, if you can't use your backs and you have to put it all on the right shoulder of Luke Doty, I, 
I think it's going to be a tough night. I think it's going to be a tough night for you. So, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. I totally agree with that. Um, you know, and, and can, can Carolina design something maybe not, I don't know. I, you can't design anything new at this point, but can you maybe execute something in your playbook in the run game that maybe you haven't shown yet uh, to be able to move the ball effectively on the ground? It's crazy to me, man. I, I, I mean, I get, you know, Georgia, I, you know, again, I, don't, I feel like I've been hyping them all, all freaking, this might as well be the go dogs podcast, but like, <laughs> I mean, I get it. You know, they're, they're phenomenal, but, South Carolina has four phenomenal backs that I just uh, I I'm still waiting for them to to break out, you know. I mean, and Juju did, you know, late in the game against ECU. Um, but I'm still waiting for like that epic Marshawn Lloyd moment, you know, that long Kevin Harris. Right, I'll move. tell you this for a fan base and just call it for what it is, a program that spent the entire off season and preseason yeah. feeling yeah. disrespected because our running yeah. back room's not ranked yeah. high enough. hundred percent. You've, you've done nothing in three weeks right. to tell anybody that the Georgia yeah. backs looked a lot better than your guys. So, Hey, use that as your motivation or whatever, if you the fuel you need, but right now you're, you're not, you're not as good as you thought you were or said you were all preseason. So no. what, do you, what no, are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and if you watch, you know, Auburn and Penn state, I mean, tank Bigsby is a oh, problem. Yeah, he, he's 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 for real. He's for real. Yeah, but so was Kevin Harris last year, and again, you know, that hasn't gone anywhere. Um, like they still have the same running back room, <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure out where the disconnect is, and hopefully, it's just sort of ironing out some kinks in the first three games, miscommunication issues and whatnot. I mean, they've been there, dude. I, like against ECU. I can't remember the two receivers, but you you had two receivers basically almost running the same route. I don't know if you saw this. And then oh like, yeah, it was uh was it Van like picked off was, Jaheim was, Bell basically or yes, something? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm thinking okay, obviously that's not by design. Um, so it felt what, like it felt like the bad news bears. Like we were just you know, yes, and it worked oh, out, but it was like oh my god, what are we? You know, doing? What, it re- you know what it reminded me of? It's I I can't remember if this was Muschamp or if this was McElwain. But the two Florida offensive linemen blocking each other in that. Oh game, yes, yes. It yes. reminded me. I was. I mean, it's like, huh? Uh, it's one of those moments where you're like, that's not right. That doesn't. Look, <laughs> that's not by design at all. So you know. And then last night, clearly, you know, to carry on Joiner, super, super frustrated with some of the calls. Right. I mean, he's he's barking back at the sideline, like I, you know, like he's confused. The coaches are confused beamer you know is sitting there dropping f-bombs like i'm like wow i didn't even know he did that you know like i didn't even know that word word was in his vocabulary uh you know what i mean and and so clearly that is that is a massive massive issue so i'm trying to figure out and again as the season goes along i think we're going to get answers to this but i'm trying to figure out if maybe some of those issues on the offensive line and in the run game are just sort of communication issues and scheme issues, or maybe they're just getting whooped. I don't know. I'm not sure, man. Uh, And I, again, I think we'll find out a lot on Saturday. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I I think this is, like I said, going to be a measuring stick. You're going to really get a good idea. Again, I, I will tell you, Mike, I picked this Kentucky game as a loss in the preseason. Um, So you know, it's interesting. I had a couple of people send me some screenshots that apparently the ESPN FBI index or whatever the index, which if you care about that, I, I don't yeah. know, but it is actually flipped to South Carolina being like 55% favor mm. probability to win. So mm. take it for what it's worth. I know Kentucky didn't look great on Saturday, but yeah, like you mentioned, the cats still, I, I think there's still a problem. They still feature with Levis and the guys they have on the outside and that running game with Rodriguez and a really tough stoops defense it will be a challenge for South Carolina. I would expect them, again, we're talking on Sunday afternoon, the line hasn't dropped yet. I would expect Kentucky probably to be a four-and-a-half, five-point favorite in this football game, maybe maybe yeah. six, but that's kind yeah. of where I see it falling in regards to the, the probabilities, if you will. Yeah, that that is uh, that is interesting that ESPN flipped because, I mean, Carolina lost two defensive starters yesterday. You know, I mean, I don't know when Cam Smith's coming back. Um you know, I mean, he he re-injured his the same foot 
that he's been having problems with. So I don't know, man. Um, I, I definitely uh, would not have done that just because, I mean, those two injuries I think are massive for this game on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully Cam Smith's back, but, you know, certainly losing a starting middle linebacker. Uh, a senior too, a senior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not not good. Um, so you know, uh, like I said, I mean, hope hopefully Cam just sort of re-aggravated it a little bit, and he's able to to you know get back healthy yeah. in the middle of the week. But yeah. I don't know, man. I guess we'll find out tonight. 